Hello, in this presentation, we'll be looking at trusses and how we can analyze trusses in ANSYS, specifically ANSYS APDL. Now, this is not ANSYS Mechanical, or sorry, ANSYS, well, ANSYS Mechanical, ANSYS Workbench, uh, which we'll get to later, but ANSYS APDL. It's kind of the old format, old GUI of ANSYS, but allows us to do um, one dimensional members much more easily. Um, so we're going to look at that today, actually two dimensional members. Um, and uh, that'll be what we use to analyze our truss. All right, one thing I want to cover first is that uh, there's a link, uh, the member, the kind of member we're going to use. Uh, and it used to be link one. And this changed about five years ago. This is it's 2016 when I'm recording this. Uh, so anyways, link 180 is what we're going to use. So if you're looking at uh, old books, you'll see, hey, we should be using link one for a 2D member. Well, it was replaced by link 180 about uh, around 2010. So that's what we're going to be using. And I'll show you that very soon after we start the program. All right, so this is the example we're going to be working on, this truss. So this would be example number one. Uh, in the second video, I'll show you how to do example, um, actually not number one, it should be number two. Uh, so I'll update that before the second video. All right, so this is the one we're going to be doing. So first thing you need to do is you're going to need a license for this. You need a license for ANSYS. Um, you can just open uh, ANSYS APDL. All right, so that's what we're looking for. And go ahead and hit enter on that. And I'll expand this to fit my whole window here. All right, so you can see the overall format here of the APDL. we got our main window, which we're going to do our drawings in. Uh, we got this menu on the left-hand side. We're going to do a lot of work with this menu. And basically what I'm going to try to show you here is what we're going to do is be just going from the top and working down through this, working through these different menus, applying boundary conditions, elements, constants, and then solving it post-processing. So we use this menu here on the left-hand side to do all that. On the right-hand side, we have different ways that we can manipulate our, uh, our plot. And so hopefully you have that showing, and then we'll use some of these menus here at the top. All right, so first thing we want to do after we've opened it is we want to name our file. And you wouldn't have to do this, but it's, it's good practice. So we're going to, we're going to do, um, to change the job name, or excuse me, change the, change the title. And we'll just change it to Trust. And we'll click OK there. All right, so first thing we do is come down here. Uh, let's start out with preferences. This will kind of make things a lot cleaner for what we're doing. So I'm going to just click on preferences. And what you see here is the different types of analysis we could do, structural, thermal, ANSYS fluid, magnetic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, clearly, we're going to be doing structural here as we look at our truss. So just click the uh, check on that. What you're going to find is this will reduce the menus down to only the items that apply to structural analysis. So you won't have to look at any thermal stuff, any fluid stuff, and so that'll help the process. So go ahead and click OK on there. So now we'll go down the preprocessor, expand the menu. And the first thing we're going to do is define our element types. So this is that link uh, 180 I mentioned. So go ahead and you can either click the plus or click right on the name. And we're going to add an element type. And we'll get more into this later what, you know, when you pick which element versus another. But for now, we'll just go ahead and add. We have none defined, so we're going to add a definition. And here's our structural mass. We have a link. So we're looking at just two force members because we're looking at truss members. So we're going to click on link, and there's our 180. So link 180 is what we're looking for. We're not going to do 11. So everything looks good there. And we'll go ahead and click on OK. And so it pops up here. We're going to have a type 1 element. So 1 is the indicator of what kind of element we're using, is link 180. So go ahead and hit close on that. So we're good there. All right, now we're going to move on to real constants, the next menu down. So click on real constants and add it at delete. And we'll add that. And so we're going to apply this constant to this particular element. So we'll go ahead and click OK. And so this is the different real constants we could have for each element. And so this one we're just going to say is 1. And the area we're going to define as is 8. All right, so going back to the presentation real quick, what is 8? Why are we calling that 8? Well, if you look at the slideshow here, um, actually, it doesn't show it really right, right here. But 8 inches is the cross-sectional area. So this would obviously have to be given, or you'd have to know this as you're designing your, your truss system. Uh, but 8 inches, keyword there, inches is the cross-sectional area. All right. So what we notice as we go back, let me get it shown up there, and then utility menu. All right. There is no dimension showing here. Right. We didn't set the dimensions. Of the front. So ANSYS is very open to any dimensional system. 
But you need to remember that because as we go through and pick other things, we need to make sure our dimensions are consistent throughout our, our applying these values into the menus. All right, so eight is what we have here. So eight inches, go ahead and click OK. And so we'll close that. Looks good. All right, so now we go to the next thing down. We're going to do material properties. And we'll go into the material models. All right, and we're obviously doing structural. So we'll go over here, structural. And we'll look at linear, elastic, and isotropic. So iso, constant. All right. So here our modulus is going to be for a material is 1.9 e to the sixth. All right, and the Poisson ratio is 0.3. And go ahead and click OK on that. So it shows up over here as our new model. We'll just click on it, it should pop back up. So cancel that out. So that's what we got there. It looks good. And we can come up here and click exit, or you can come over here and click the, um, the close button. Either one's fine. All right, doing well there. Save DB. And so this is a big thing you want to do as you do any type of modeling, especially anything you're doing on a computer. You want to save often. Uh, things can crash, um, interruptions in the computer, electricity, whatever. Uh, make sure you're saving so you don't have to go back and do some work. Uh, so by the way, I just I, I put in the modulus. I've put in the 8 inches cross section. To, uh, just to be clear here, what we're solving here is a balcony truss. Let me go back here. This is a balcony truss made out of Douglas fir wood. So that's what we're the values we're using and what it's all set up for. So a balcony truss um, using Douglas fir wood.